Okay, so, uh, oh, great, my mistake didn't start again. I'll just, uh, wait, close that one. And just have to wait for that. That's great. I love these diagrams, but uh, there we go, that's still recording. So, uh, so I'll start my new file by um, opening, and uh, so on the main menu I'm just going to choose open, and uh, I'm going to open the file that I've uh, given you on the uh, folder on the P drive, CAD2, brief2, file with image, and so it already has the measurements uh, inserted in the uh, image there that's been added to this file, so notice we've got the ground floor plan without the image and then ground floor with image and so I'm just going to get right into setting out the main measurements using these reference planes and I'm going to draw them basically over my image which I've already scaled so I'm going to zoom in and draw over the center line which if you don't know is what uh, is always um, the measuring point with computer graphics hand drawn graphics not always the case they sometimes often make they do it to one side of the line but computer graphics always center of the line so the more you zoom in uh, the more accurate you can be and if you are uh, accurate then um, there's less uh, adjusting of your measurements as you go along so here I've drawn the two main reference planes I'm going to use to measure from uh, and to measure everything else so I've got the uh, vertical and the horizontal reference plane uh, that uh, again I can set out most of my other measurements from so I'm going to draw some more reference planes now, uh, going first to the overall um, corner here, so all the way along to the corner, again zooming in to make it accurate, and uh, I'm going to come down over the dimensions, also lining my ends up which I can't help, and then uh, just making it a bit longer, and then as I go along I'm going to type in these measurements, so it's close to what it should be but not exactly and uh, you want it to be exactly in millimeters the measurement that it should be uh, and um, you know, again just like you would in AutoCAD so here uh, notice I'm measuring from the corners but I'm drawing uh, horizontal and vertical reference planes only at the moment and that's a really important principle so uh, now here notice I haven't got the dimension coming up from the uh, reference plane down below so I'm going to cancel by pressing escape and then come back and select that reference plane to give me the dimension and uh, so 20220 and then uh, the next corner so again uh, going first to the left to give me a uh, horizontal reference plane to measure and uh, then before I adjust that one too much I'll draw another from the same corner which is uh, vertical so I'm just stretching that down so notice these dimensions all correspond to those points so that should uh, help you to line up and I'll even stretch this one over here and it should line up with that dimension you can see there so uh, again just checking these all have the dimension that's uh, written and uh, Sorry, I've made that a bit too much. So two zero three two five, and so uh, now notice here, it's very important to have this dimension measured from the bottom first before then coming back and adjusting this one and making sure it is uh, set out properly. You can do it checking in both directions. So two one two zero in this direction, or eighteen one hundred if you measured down to the one below uh, and so that gives me all of the um, points that I need to draw then the diagonals so looking in the ground floor plan even without the image there I should be able to fill those in now just by drawing some more reference planes over those intersections and that'll give me the angle of those walls so it's really important that you set it out that way, not trying to do the angles first, always measuring uh, vertical and horizontal. It just won't be accurate otherwise. And uh, so then, uh, again, always setting out the overall 
exterior dimensions first and then uh, coming back in and adding uh, adding details that you need afterwards. So working along the, uh, the bottom wall there, you can see we've got these piers and that's the next thing that I'm going to set out. And uh, so with the um, measurements you can see for the wall there, you can maybe tell that there's actually two wall thick thicknesses there, essentially we've got two lots of 300. So I'm going to draw a reference plane that's 300 mil back from the first one. Okay, so again, always checking that the measurements are rounded off. And then to get the reference plane uh, copied to the left of the uh, one I've drawn at an angle, there's a bit of a trick you can use uh, to get offset reference planes. So you probably know you can use the offset command that you have on the modify panel. You've got offset. But with offset, it won't let you choose reference plane. So it's a bit of a trick if you can remember when you want to offset a reference plane, use the reference plane tool, use pick line, and then you can put an offset value there on the options bar. Right, so now I can pick the reference plane and it'll give me a new one to the right. So it's a bit of a trick. Okay, so now I can uh, set out with some confidence to get the um, even base that I want. So with the, uh, the row going along the bottom, I might even just draw some reference planes very roughly using the openings there to face off. Stretching down to the dimension doesn't hurt. And uh, these are easy, they're just a thousand uh, from each side. So you can see here the importance of having that vertical reference plane to measure from the corner. So that one luckily was exactly a thousand. And these, because I've done the, um, the working out for these measurements, you could just type in those, those measurements there, 4680. But if you had to work this out yourself, then you'd need to work out what those uh, values are by dividing that total measurement and subtracting uh, 4,000, which is your number of uh, uh, peers. So again there, that's 1,000, that's okay. And uh, again here, so, now, I didn't check the first measurement, so I'll come back and uh, do that, and then... Okay, so because I've moved this reference plane to the right, I've got to move this one as well to the right, because it's now 20 mil more than it should be, so I've got to select that reference plane to the left, then change my measurement so that it moves, not the first one. And now, finally, this last measurement you can see is correct. Okay, so looking again in the ground floor view without that image there getting in the way, you can see that we've got these even set outs for the piers on the bottom wall. And now I've got to do the same thing with this angled wall. And that's where things get a bit more involved, as I was saying before. So there I need to draw some reference planes again. And to give me a starting object to work with, I'm going to draw just from a point out in space and then taking it back to the first reference plane there, I'm going to make sure I get the perpendicular symbol, that right angle symbol. So this reference plane is at right angle to that one that was highlighted. This one. Okay, so now I've just cancelled. By pressing escape, so I can select that plane. And I'm going to click the move button. And pick it up on the end, on its end point. And I'm going to snap that right to the intersection here on the corner, completely the corner of my building. And notice this is where it can be really um, tricky, this building, because this angle isn't quite a right angle to this one. And so that can get in the way. So I'm going to grab that reference plane and stretch this back to the corner so it isn't going to get in the way of this one. So it's coming out at just a slightly different angle. 
and when you're doing buildings, this is the sort of thing you really have to be on top of. Uh, you know, it's the reason you get paid um, to do your job because uh, the builders can work out most of the things you you can, uh, but you need someone there coordinating everything and making sure these little details don't get missed. Uh, and that's really the main responsibility, uh, apart from doing, you know, doing a nice design kit as well. But uh, if someone isn't there to work this out, then the building, you know, it doesn't happen. So uh, that's that's critical having that reference plane there to measure from. Now I can uh, use the same option or, or uh, trick I showed you before. Again, just drawing a reference plane, pick lines, and then I'll put in an offset a thousand here, and then pick that reference plane, pick a new one. Uh, I'll show you a few more tricks then with uh, copy if I select both of those reference planes together using control. Then uh, I can click the copy button. And I know maybe at first you might not use these tools so much if you know about the shortcuts like using control and shift and so on to copy, but you know, remember to use these because they do have all have their uses. So with copy, you get to choose a base point. So I'm gonna pick one here on the uh, end point on that reference plane on the bottom, pick it up and then I can snap to the little section at the bottom. Okay, because I've picked it up to that base point, I know exactly where it's gone. I'll go back to the one that's got the image, and then you can see that I can, uh, well, there's different ways I can uh, get that uh, those planes copied across, I suppose, but uh, I might just use the simplest way with reference plane again. Pick, and well, we know that that is uh, 4745. Uh, four so I'm going to make it 5745 five because we've got an extra meter there. So now I can just pick each of these reference planes. Oops, I've gone the wrong way. So it's gone down here. So I'll do that. Okay, so I'll just pick that again. And uh, from the ones above, I can get the others that I need. Alright, so that'll give you all of those set out going along that side. And uh, that's really the bulk of the work. Once you've got it to that point, um, it will take uh, literally a couple of minutes to draw all the walls. Uh, I'll just do that right now. So clicking on the wall tool, I'm not, in, I'm not even going to worry about the height. I'm just going to set the location line to finish face exterior. And then I'll just trace over the uh, also, again, making the uh, wall type uh, generic 300 mil, and then I'll just trace over the intersections of my reference plane, and uh, using space if you need to, to flip the wall to the right side. Okay, so here I'm going to the intersection on the back reference plane, not the one at the front, that's for the piers. Okay, so there's the inside wall done. That's your main exterior wall. And then you can just again use the same wall. So again, just using the wall tool. Still finish face exterior, that's the main thing. And I can go to the um, points that I've used or set out with my extra reference planes. Again, space if you need to. And so you can either cancel in between each time, or this is a good opportunity to turn chain off. And then you can just go along clicking on each point and it'll uh, finish it after each wall that you do. Okay, so here you can just go from the uh, end to the corner and then around again. So I've got a chain there anyway, just click on the point again. And uh, so coming along here, So there we are, and uh, that's all the exterior walls done. Uh, the final thing would be to join them, so using join on the modify tab, you can simply then choose each of the walls and join them to the smaller walls to clean that up. Okay, 
Okay, so that's going to give you, oh, if I'll keep extending that. All right, so notice on the corners you'll need to join a few extra walls because the one that comes to the corner also needs to join to the wall that comes uh, away in the other direction. So just keep clicking on them until you get them all joined essentially. You can try using multiple join, but uh, if that doesn't work for you, just do them one at a time. And uh, so there we are, that should be the layout for Ormo's main wall.